we're going to talk about which t-test to use. At this point, we've learned about three different t-tests, a one-sample t, a dependent t, and an independent t. And this is where students can feel a little confused as to knowing which t-test they're supposed to do. So I'm going to do this exercise with you to help you get used to that. Now, it's a little funny to do it first, but you'll get the hang of it. So I ask you to bear with me and, and try this exercise. Um, what I'm going to have you do is think like a professor. So let's say that we wanted to have this idea. We wanted to see if smoking affects work productivity. Let's say I need to make a test question. And I said, okay, I know the test is going to be about whether, or the prompt is going to be about whether smoking affects work productivity. Well, if I wanted to have the test question to be a one sample T or a single sample T, what would it need to be written as to indicate to the student that a single sample T is warranted? What would it need to say if it was an independent T? And what would it need to say if it was a dependent T? So this might feel fuzzy at first, give it a good go, and then we'll go over the answers and then we'll do it again. So pause the video after you, or pause the video and go ahead and create maybe one or two sentences that describe a study effect, seeing if smoking affects work productivity using a one sample T, an independent T, or a dependent T. And then when you're ready, unpause the video. Okay, so I hope that you actually did this activity because the the benefit is in the effort you put in, not in just watching me do it. So if you didn't um, actually write something out, please pause the video and do that. Otherwise, let's continue on. So what would it look like if we were going to do a single sample T? So we would look at the productivity of a sample of smokers compared to, and here's the clincher, the overall productivity of the entire factory. So let's say the factory is making widgets. You would have um, a sample of say 25 smokers make widgets and you compare their productivity rate to the overall factory rate. And I want to point out that that overall productivity includes smokers and non-smokers. So sometimes students think it should be a sample of smokers compared to a sample of non-smokers, but that's not a one sample T. A one sample T only has one sample. So it'd be a one sample of smokers compared to the average rate of productivity for the entire factory. Now, what would it look like if we were doing a dependent T? So we want to see how smoking affects work productivity. So what we would do is look at the productivity before smoking. We maybe have a sample of 36 people and we look at their productivity before they smoked compared to after they smoked, the same people. So the dependent T is going to look at a sample of people, but it's the same people, but we're going to look at them twice, before and after smoking. See how that's different from the one sample T that just looked at them smoking compared to the average rate of the uh, factory. Now let's see how this would look as an independent sample T. In this one, the story would say, we're going to look at the productivity of smokers, a sample of smokers compared to a sample of non-smokers. So this is what most students probably would have thought of as a design. You take 36 smokers and compare their productivity to 36 non-smokers. So this is a very different design than looking at one sample of 36 people compared to the um, factory average or um, comparing 36 people before and after smoking. So these are three very different designs that, do, that um, require that you do three different kinds of mathematical analysis. So let's do another one and see if you got the hang of it. So this actually happened to me once. They ran out of white paper and so I gave everybody exams on pink paper and I thought this would be a fun prompt. Let's see you want, if you wanted to know if pink exams change performance compared to typical white paper. So go ahead and pause the video here and write out what you think our comparisons would be for a one sample T, a dependent T, and an independent sample T. All right, so how would this look if we were doing a one sample T or a single sample T? This is the same thing. So we would look at the test scores of students who took the test on pink paper compared to the average test scores for all students in all classes. And, and that's what I ended up doing uh, for the students who got it this one time on pink paper because we ran out of white paper. I just looked at their average compared to my overall average across all my classes. I know what my average is for my test. So see how there's one sample of people um, and I'm comparing it to a known average. How would this look as a dependent T? So we would look at the test scores of students who took it on white paper compared to 
the same students who then take it again on pink paper. Now you might be thinking that doesn't sound like a very valid design. And you might be right. You see how this design may not work well for this particular question. That's why we have different designs. The, it may be that if you get the same test twice, you do better the second time because you already have seen it one time. Um, and so if you are more interested in learning about what is the best design to do, I encourage you to take a research methods class. And there you'll learn about counterbalancing. And that would be where you'd have half the students start on white and go to pink and the other half the students start on pink and go to white. And therefore, any benefit of going the second time is kind of washed out. But what I would like you to focus on is if we were to do this particular question, if the dependent t-test, or sorry, where a dependent t-test was required, we would have to have the same set of students take it on white paper and the same test on, then on pink paper. What would this look like if we were doing a two sample independent t? We would look at the test scores of those who took it on pink paper compared to the test scores of those who took it on white paper. So we have two samples now, a sample of pink paper people and a sample of white paper people. All right, let's do one more. Let's say that you wanted to know if eating cheese reduces bacteria in the mouth. I read a study about this and I thought it would make an interesting prompt. So go ahead and pause the video so you can make your comparisons for one sample, a dependent, and an independent sample T. So here we're going to see if we do a single sample T, we're going to look at a sample of people and then look at their bacteria in the mouth for when they ate cheese compared to just an overall bacteria rate that we know. Maybe you'd call up a dentist and say, what's the average bacteria rate of people? And then you'd have a sample of 36 people eat cheese and then see what their bacteria is compared to the known average. What would this look like as a dependent T? Here we would look at the bacteria of a sample of people before they eat cheese compared to the bacteria of the same people after they eat cheese. So you see it's the same people, but we have two measurements from them before and after eating cheese. How would this look as a two sample independent T? Here we would look at the bacteria of a sample of people who eat cheese compared to the bacteria of people who didn't eat cheese. So now we have two samples, those who eat cheese and those who didn't eat cheese, and we look at their bacteria. So what you see we've done is practice making the comparison so we know which t-test is warranted. Now let's see if you can put your practice to play and answer a more direct question like you might see on the test. Polly cooks dinner for her friends and wants to know if people would like imitation crab as much as the real stuff. She gives half her friends a dish made with real crab and the other half of her friends a dish made with imitation crab. And then she asks them to report how much they liked it. Uh, I like the meal on the scale below from yuck to I love it. So is that a one sample T, a dependent T, or an independent T? So the answer is independent T. And the reason we knew that is because she gave half her friends one condition and the other half of her friends another condition. And so there's two samples there. Mark believes people find him more attractive when he wears all black. He asks 10 people to rate him in black, sorry, while he's wearing black, and then he rushes to change into pink and asks the same 10 people to rate his attractiveness again. Is this a one sample T, a dependent T, or an independent T? The answer here would be a dependent T because he's asking the same people to rate him in both black and pink. Lulu thinks that people choose dogs with similar features to their own body and face. Lulu rates six dogs on how fluffy their hair seems. She then rates their owners on how fluffy their hair seems. Is this a one sample T, a dependent T, or an independent T? Okay, this is a hard one. In this case, the answer is a dependent T. And that's because this, even though this isn't the same person over and over again, these are pairs of people. So I can't compare this lady to this guy's dog and this lady to this guy's dog. It has to be this lady with her own dog and this guy with his own dog. So I'm pairing them up. So that means that instead of it being two different samples, it's one sample of an owner dog couple. And it's the dog version of the couple and the owner version of the couple. So this would warrant a dependent t-test. That was a hard one. Dr. Dam cla Dr. Dam's class averages about 75% on her finals. 
However, this year she thinks her class is pretty stellar and wonders if they'll score higher. She records the average score of this particular section to see if they are different. Is that a one sample T, a dependent T, or an independent T? And in this case, it's a one sample T because she's comparing this particular section as her sample and comparing that to her known average. Students get 75% on her finals. So she's gonna compare this particular section to the known average. So hopefully that was good practice for you to know what it would look like when you need to do a one sample T, a dependent T, or an independent sample T.